get by It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See lights like a peach If you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of P90X, Quest Nutrition, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which helps service professionals, doctors, lawyers, coaches, accountants, stop just trading time for dollars and shift from one-to-one client work to -to one-to-many. Rise25 is an exclusive accountability and group coaching program for professional service entrepreneurs who want to scale up and stop just trading time for dollars. It was founded by my business partner, John Corcoran, and myself, where we bring together like-minded entrepreneurs from different client-serving backgrounds. Go to rise25.com. There's one thing on there you should check out. Download your free dream product ladder. It's actually planning out your product ladder, your business on one sheet of paper. So check it out. And big thanks to Matt Monroe, who's a rock star photographer, and he's a person who's covered four of our retreats at Rise 25 because he introduced me to Ben, and I'm excited to introduce you to Ben. Ben Jacobson founded Jacobson Salt in 2011, and they are the first company to harvest salt in the Pacific Northwest since, get out your history books, since Lewis and Clark. The company has transformed from a local small business to a nationally recognized brand as one of America's leading premium salt makers and can be found in such places as Williams Sonoma, Whole Foods, and many more. And uh, Ben, I think we'd agree there's humble beginnings there where you start off taking five gallon buckets in your Subaru to hauling 10,000 pounds of salt water each week in your U-Haul and <laughs> staying up 72 hours at a time per batch. So, Ben, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeremy, for sure. So, take me back to those 72 hours straight. That sounds like a Navy SEAL hell week. Um, <laughs> what was it like? What were you doing in those 72 hours? Um, it was, you know, the, the early days of, of our small business was was quite difficult and, and just, you know, physically strenuous as, in addition to just kind of the running the business aspect of it. Um, uh, simply because I was hauling salt water, you know, seawater from um, knee charts from the Oregon coast to Portland, Oregon to and then start making salt. Um, but, you know, we're like many other small businesses that just start out. It's it's you know, it's um, you're you're on all the time. And um, I don't think we're necessarily that different from any other small startup. But um, in this case, we just happen to have the need to move, you know, tens of thousands of pounds of seawater. <laughs> So I know that you studied in in Denmark and Norway, right? And that's kind of where you discovered salt. But you were a hobby salt maker. Um, I, yeah, I discovered um, great finishing salt when I lived in Denmark, and then I moved to Norway for a job. And um, I wasn't making salt there at the time, but I was. Um, but I uh, I definitely kind of fell in love with it and and realized that the um, this the significance of, of using great salt and very simple food. And, um, to me that was just a, it was, it was transformative and it was, don't want to like sound, um, strange, but it was, it was life changing in a way. And, and I certainly never would have expected myself to, um, have a salt company, um, eight years ago. And now we're six years old and I spent two and a half years figuring out how to make good salt when I moved back to the U S. So, yeah, it was, it's definitely changed my life. <laughs> yeah. So I want to get into that journey of the five-gallon buckets to kind of your setup now. But talk a little bit because you call yourself a mediocre cook. And so how you can you know take great salt and make food, you know, simple food, great. Mm-hmm. Um, so what are some of the unexpected uses that you've used it for and, and other people? I mean, that's the, the power of using great salt and, and great ingredients in simple cooking. Um, today, this morning, I had a piece, I cooked a piece of toast, um, and I spread some hummus on it, and um, a little bit of our habanero salt. Um, and it was, a, it was a great start to the day, and I ate the, the toast on my way to work here this morning um, in the car. But, um, you know, it it's, can be as simple as that to sprinkling 
um, salt on a on a cucumber that you you know grew in your garden and 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 sliced up, and it's it's just delicious. It doesn't have to be complicated or fancy. Um, that said, we work with you know we work with some of the best chefs in the country, and um, their use of salt of our salt um, inspires me every day. Uh, but I, I guess my point in saying all of that is that I make no, I don't profess to be a great cook. Um, I just, I know that the power of re- using really simple ingredients yeah. can elevate very simple food. So how do you come up with the different flavors? Um, that's probably the, one of the most fun aspects of the, of the job is it's, it's, um, it's really just kind of trial and error and, and really what sounds good. Um, couple of months or I guess about a year and a half ago now I became kind of fascinated with black garlic and we I was gonna say want- <laughs> like after we get off this I'm purchasing one of those so thank you the, the infused black garlic salt looks to me like like cooking you know pastas and, and things like that and I I am looking forward to getting that totally yeah it's I'm just naturally a curious person and and like kind of tinkering with stuff and um and wanted to figure out how to make black garlic. It's not that hard with, you know, YouTube videos and what have you. And, um, and, um, we did, and, and then we made the black garlic and then we dried it out. Um, so you actually made blend- the black garlic. Yeah. We fermented okay. garlic and then dried it out in our dehydrator and then blended it into our salt. And, um, our black garlic salt is now super popular and, and people that have probably never come into contact with just whole fermented black garlic or black garlic paste, um, are trying our black garlic salt. And it's neat because it's, um, um, it's just a fun thing to do. And it's, it's, it's not, um, it's, it's not as if it's a, you know, super laborious process for us. And even if it was, um, it's, it's just a fun, um, thing to experiment with. Yeah. So, yeah, so where have these come from? Because obviously that came, besides yourself, like, oh, this sounds good to me, customer requests, chef requests, like talk about some of the origins. So you have the garlic salt, you have black garlic salt, you have black pepper salt, ghost chili salt. Where, what is the most interesting story origin from one of these, uh, the salts currently? So the, uh, the Pinot Noir salt. Oh, yeah. So John Groshaw um, of Groshaw Cellars is a friend of mine and um you know, John let me um, use some of his, uh, his his wine totes and to haul seawater in, um, and then um, help me use the forklift that he had for his winery, um, and and so we just wanted to figure out a way to work together. And so at first we started. Um, I asked him if I could um, use a barrel, an old barrel of his, and we aged um, salt in the barrel. Mm. Um, and it didn't do a whole lot, honestly. Um, we aged it for a couple of months, and so we tried to figure out other ways to work together. And so we then decided to try and evaporate wine um, with, you know, in the salt and um, make a, a, a wine salt essentially. And um, we did, and it's um, it's a beautiful kind of uh, pink, purplish color, and um, uses great Oregon Pinot Noir and um, from John Groshaw and. Um, and it's a really nice, um, it's a really nice salt to use on like anything you'd have a glass of red wine with. So steak, pizza, pasta. Um, somebody last night that posted on Instagram that they make chocolate cookies with our Pinot Noir salt, and really, um, wow. it looks incredible. I wish I could have one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one fun science experiment. What's totally. uh, what are the most popular ones out of all of them? Um, right now, our black garlic salt is popular. Um, our black pepper salt, because nothing goes better with salt than pepper. Obviously, um, it's super versatile. Um, our garlic salt, I feel like uh, what I want to do is make good salt approachable to everybody in America. And one of the reasons, one of the ways we tried to do that was, you know, I feel like most kids in America grow up with a jar of garlic salt in their pantry. Um, and, um, it's kind of, it's pretty universal. It seems like, so what we wanted to do was take the best salt on the planet that we think we make and, try and find great garlic powder. And so we tested 27 different garlic powders um, and finally settled up on an organic one from um, this uh, place in Eugene, Oregon. Um, and they make, um, and, and, and they have exceptional garlic powder. And so we blend the garlic powder in with our salt and um, you just end up with uh, kind of the best of both worlds, just a, a really killer um, garlic salt. And that's just fun to me is just kind of like, new riffs on on old classics i love that yeah it it looks it's making me hungry um so for you i want to talk about early on right so 
you have this idea. I mean, was it th at the point when you were just starting off taking five gallon buckets? Was that just as a hobby, or was that you wanted to you, you decide you wanted to make a business of it? Um, early on, it was a hobby, um, and I, that was my part of the that was part of my process to try and figure out how to make great salts. And spent two and a half years doing it, and it literally was just a hobby. Every time I'd go out to the coast camping or crabbing or whatever. Um, I'd pull back, I'd, you know, bring back five gallons of seawater and, um, and just kind of iterate and tinker and finally figured out a process, um, after that two and a half years. Um, once I did, I, I tested water from 25 different spots from South Southern coast of Oregon to in gold beach, Oregon to, um, Nia Bay in Washington state and, um, and made salt from all of those sources of water and knee tarts Bay where we are now was far and away the best. Um, and so soon after that, it became a business. I went to a local um, grocery store called New Seasons, it's like a local Whole Foods, um, and the buyer tasted it and um, said, he, he, he said, um, how, much, how much is it and uh, how soon can I place the order? And at that point, I said, oh, shit, I better start a business because <laughs> um, I hadn't started a business yet. And um, then I did, and, and um, the rest is the – water under the bridge <laughs> how much did they want to buy for the first order um let's see here they wanted to buy i think it was 30 pounds because they had 10 stores at the time i think they have 15 or 16 stores now but so they've grown quite a bit but um but um i think it was 30 pounds at the time and before that i probably made, probably made three to four pounds at the time so significant it's upgrade. like 10 times in your output so how Big do you time. do that how do you go from producing okay i can do three pounds to and that's only one order when they reorder yeah. and other you get other sales that's a different story exactly yeah um it was just it was really just a kind of trial by fire honestly and and just trying to figure out my way how to do it as quickly as i could um and making sure that um quality was kept up the whole the whole way and really the the most challenging parts about my job and our job, my job early on, and then our job collectively t going forward is um, figuring out the right equipment for the job. Um, salt making equipment doesn't exist, and it so doesn't anything really. that oh. yeah, anything that we have is custom fabricated, custom designed, and custom made, and um, and meaning we have to select the right materials and everything else because salt is is naturally you know super corrosive and caustic um, right. to everything it touches, so. It doesn't matter if you have, you know, the highest grade stainless steel, um, it's still going to rust and corrode. Um, so you have to make your, your material decisions very carefully. Mm. Um, and as a result, that's been, that's been definitely tricky to, to figure out because I don't have an engineering or, you know, um, any sort of engineering background. So take me through in the beginning when you started, this is a business now, you were still at that point hauling it in a U-Haul. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Rented U-Haul so trucks. <laughs> how are you? How are you actually collecting it and putting it in a U-Haul? And what were you bringing into? What did it look like at that time? Um, I was at the time I was collecting it in, in you know water containers that you get for uh, for camping those five gallon jugs and um, and hauling hauling two of those and um, and uh, would sorry one second it's downstairs. Um, I would I would haul two um, two of those water jugs and um, and fill up the the wine tote 275 gallon um, wine tote and each one of those wine totes would take about four and a half hours to fill up which is Jeez. absurd but um, just the part of the process finally figured out that um, I could potentially use a pump um, I bought a pump really cheap pump from Harbor Freight. Um, and it broke after 45 minutes of use, but I got like the, ha the, the first wine tote half full. Um, so I continued, um, continued, uh, just hand bucketing it and did that for close to six months, um, wow. two to three times a week. And then, um, and then finally, um, met a guy who has an oyster hatchery, um, and on knee charts bay and and pull up sweaty one afternoon asking him if I could randomly, um, you know, if he pumps seawater in, and that's a strange question I realized, but ended up he pumps about 130,000 gallons a day. And so Whoa. 
I was able to form a, just build a relationship with him over time and um, finally started to get um, seawater from him. And yeah. That's wild. So I know you have some salt within your vicinity there. Could you show us? Because if you look at it online, it's almost like it looks like a snow. It's a, like a snowflake or something, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, we make three primary types of salt. Um, it's 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 all made in the same process, but um, we make a, a pure kosher salt. So that's um, a very fine um, grain sea salt, very fine flake sea salt. It's great for you know cooking, brining, baking, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, where texture of the salt doesn't necessarily matter. We make a coarse grinding salt um, that you put in a simple salt grinder, and then we then we make our pure flake salt. And our pure flake salt is. Um, comes in in um, you know four ounce bags and then in these chef jars and these chef jars um, are the jars that um, chef, that we the chefs that we work with um, use um, they're obviously working in much higher volumes and sending out hundreds of plates a night and yeah. so um, um, this the salt is this is some particularly large flake but um, wow. this is uh, an example of some of the salts um, that we make that's wild I don't know if you can see that Holy but cow. Um, but it's it's you know super um, delicate, um, clean and briny. You can eat it on on its own, and it's just delicious. And so, um, the reason that our our salt tastes so clean and briny is is a very kind of deliberate, natural part of our process. Um, so it's it's not you know it doesn't occur just by chance. Um, so it's just a it's just a fun way to um, to use great salt. Yeah, you hand. I mean, this is handcrafted, literally, right? You like shovel it into. I was watching the video. You shovel yeah. it into a bin, and it has these huge flakes. Mm -hmm. um, how long does it take from when you pump the seawater in to actually getting that in the jar? Um, it takes about two and a half weeks ballpark from mm -hmm. you know raw seawater to to um, to dry yeah. flake of salt like this. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's it, it's it's. It's a process that technically could be sped up, but we wouldn't. Um, the the end result wouldn't be these beautiful flakes. It's so. pretty amazing. Yeah, because it's got to sit there, right in in almost like a water bath, and just for for how long? Uh, it's it's. I mean, it's. I mean, that part of the process takes three to four days or so. So <laughs> it's a waiting game. <laughs> yeah, it's a waiting Jeez. game. It's, it's but if you make great wine, it takes time, and if you make mm -hmm. even great beer, it takes time. So. Um, what was a milestone for you? Yeah, and what was a milestone for you in the business wise? So now, I mean, you've started to perfect the process, and now you have to sell it. What's a big milestone from from that standpoint, from the selling standpoint? Um, I think getting our sales to the point where we could support a small team. And for me, a personal milestone was being able to afford health insurance for and pay for health insurance for all of our employees. Mm -hmm. um, and that came after our first William Sonoma order, um, and it was definitely a turning point, just kind of um, scale-wise, in the sense that you know we we had enough um, volume kind of happening on a on a recurring basis, recurring order basis, that um, it allowed us just to get to the next level and and be able to you know free up a little bit of of earnings for uh, things like. A, you know, fundamental human rights, <laughs> health insurance. Right. Um, so, yeah. How did they hear about you? Um, I had approached them um, probably for a year and a half um, and worked with their local store. And their local store was sending our samples to their, you know, corporate headquarters in, in San Francisco. And, um, and finally got in touch with the, with the buyer. They went through a couple of, 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 um, you know, some buyer transition and, um, they have a new V or new head of food. Um, his name is Neil Lick and, um, I met him at fancy food show in New York. Um, I don't know, four years ago or something, five years ago. And, um, it took again, you know, after we met probably another six to 12 months for us to actually, you know, send an order to them. But, um, but it was a it was a it was a great it was a great um, relationship and it's you know they're huge supporters of what what we do now which is really thankful for them yeah so Ben I know this comes with sacrifices you know building up this company I mean in the beginning you were staying up for days at a time to do this what are some of the sacrifices you've made to 
to make this business work? Um, I mean, I, I've just, you know, personal relationship sacrifices. Um, I went for close to two and a half years without getting paid um, or, you know, getting, getting basically just taking money from the company when I, when I had to have it. Um, and, um, actually it was more than two and a half years. It was more like, it was closer to three years, but, um, but, um, and then just, you know, um, just kind of the, the sacrifices of work and, and not being able to go ride your bike in the middle of the day for four hours is, um, I miss that for sure. And that's, um, I love cycling and I love running and exercise and, um, I certainly get it in some in now, but it's, it's not, not the way it used to be for sure. But that's okay. So how many people does it take to harvest, get all the salt and create the salt now? Um, we have, um, 12 employees, 12 full-time employees at our facility on the coast. Um, I believe it is. And, um, it might actually even be 13 now. Um, we just did an org chart and I used to count, but, um, but uh, 12 full-time employees that are super dedicated. And I think our crew out there, I'm proud of them. And, you know, they're, they're kind of the unsung heroes because um, nobody actually or very few people actually meets the people who make the salt. And, um, and I'm just super proud of what they do every day. And um, it's not, you know, they're, we're, they're out there on the edge of the world on the coast. And um, it can be a little bit lonely, and, um, it's, but it's beautiful. And... Um, um, it's just a very special place to be able to spend part of your life. After you, who was the fir- who were the first hires? What did you hire for? After me, um, let's see here. Uh, Look, I, I can't hired, do this by myself anymore. I need someone. <laughs> yeah, I hired um, two people who helped um, make salt over the um, when I needed sleep. Um, which and, is every um, day, possibly. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, and then um, and so it was, it was two salt makers, and then I remember um, we hired. Um, I hired Molly, um, and uh, Molly started out part time doing part time deliveries for us um, because I really needed to be able to take a couple of days off, and I also wanted to be able to deliver it to the to our customers rather than once or twice a week as soon as they needed it. So within you know, and a couple of hours. Um, cause I believe that our customers are the ones that are the only reason that we're here. And so I want to put them first always. Um, and so anyway, we hired Molly and, um, Molly's been with us, um, I don't know, close to three and a half, four years. And, um, and she's awesome. Now she is our distribution manager and, um, kind of plays puppet master between, supply chain and um and our customers to make sure we you know product and 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 goods are going are flowing in the right direction at all times and there are no outages i mean when you were figuring it says not many people or no one's really doing it like this how did you figure out the process did you go to denmark or norway or where how did you figure all of it out um the process of making salt yeah um, it was just trial and error. It was, you know, I knew it was a reduction of, of seawater in some capacity. And obviously there are infinite ways you can do that. And yeah. so let's figure out the best way and, and the, the way that, you know, makes our salt super clean and briny with no bitter aftertaste. And um, and and this kind of brilliant um, translucent white and then um, and really easy to crumble in your fingertips if you want to. Talk about the byproducts. Because you have a number of byproducts that come off of from producing the salt. Yeah, we um, we have um, effectively three byproducts right now. The first is our uh, calciums and calcium and magnesium, and that essentially is if you know you, if you spent time like on a rock wall or um, weightlifting or whatever, it's it's chalk um, and. Um, it's uh, so right now we're working with a couple of, of uh, chicken farmers and um, and flower farmers in Tillamook County to see if um, that calcium um, and you know mineral might be a good soil or or fertilizer amendment for chicken mm-hmm. eggs and then for for soil. Um, and um, the second one is steam, of course. Um, and um, right now we've got a couple of ideas that we're working on around that. And then mm-hmm. the third one is. Um, it's a magnesium Epsom salt. It's it's the it's a bitter, and so um, what's left over in the salt pans um, 
at you know after the end of of at the end of when all the salt is made is um this bitter and it's um very bitter uh you wouldn't want to eat it but it's um it's it's primarily a magnesium epsom salt so we take that um and we dry it out and um that's a bath salt is yeah. effectively so it's healthy for your for your muscles and everything right yeah, yeah absolutely so we haven't we we're just selling that in very limited amounts right now we're setting on um quite a bit of it um and we're just kind of waiting to get the packaging together before we we put it out into the market that's so interesting because the byproducts are you know their their uses for those byproducts totally yeah it's i mean we effectively we have we have you know, at the with those three byproducts, we have no waste. Um, so that's that's pretty that's a fun. good tagline. Yeah, <laughs> totally, totally. It's 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 pretty fun for sure. So the steam, you could still do something with the steam. You're saying, yeah. yeah, wow, working on that. That's amazing. Um, and so for you, there's a the logistics of making the product, and there's the logistics of selling the product. What are some of the ways you manage the logistics of selling? Are there certain softwares you use or programs or for inventory and, and everything else? What mm-hmm. do you use for the actual selling? Um, right now we use a combination of um, shared Google spreadsheets, which are pretty great. <laughs> um, and we use a lot of those and shared Google Docs um, to, um, you know, Dropbox to you know to share you know assets and images and that sort of thing, um, and now we we just implemented Salesforce a few months ago and um, so between those those kind of those tools those are our most fundamental ways of of kind of managing that sales process. We also use Shopify um, to run our website and that's been super uh, you know pretty easy to work with and and um, it's it's a good. It's a good it works for us. Where can people get it? So you can get it on your website. You know, Jacobs and Salt is J A C O B S E N Salt dot com. Where else can they get it? Yeah, they can get it on our website. Um, they can get it um, from Wayne Sonoma stores, and then from about eighteen hundred different specialty shops around the country. Um, so anywhere from you know a um, uh, De La Renti in Seattle, Washington, to um, which is down near Pike, Pike Place Market, to um, uh, Farm Shop LA and Farm Shop or in LA, which is um, this great um, you know kitchen store, kitchen and market, um, to um, uh, let's see, Dean and DeLuca around the country, to Italy in New York City and Chicago yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah, we have, I'm in Chicago, Italy. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, and then all sorts of great chefs um, use our, our our salts on their you know in their in their cooking, which is so. If you're going out to a great restaurant, there's a there's a chance that they might be using our salt, which is exciting. What was the most? Is there anyone in particular, any restaurant that started using it that you were particularly excited about? Any chef or restaurant? Yeah. Um, there was, you know, there, um, I mean, to me, it's, it's the kind of the, our local heroes, um, the, the chefs that are, that are based here in Portland are, were the first chefs I ever met and, um, and the first chefs I started working with. And, um, to me, that was just incredibly humbling because I would go into these people's restaurants before I started this company, not knowing anything about food or how, you know, how it came to be. And, here I was walking in the back door of these restaurants, you know, delivering on a Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday morning type of thing. And to me, that was just um, really humbling to 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 be a part of that behind the scenes process of how you know great food gets made. Um, and then you know, of course, you you work with you know really well known chefs like um, April Bloomfield in New York City that uses our salt, or Michael Simon that um, I think he has a restaurant in in uh, Cincinnati to, um, I don't know, to, uh, chefs all over the country, but then also, you know, it doesn't, again, it doesn't have to be great fancy food. It can be, there's a food cart in Portland, um, called tight tacos and they use our salt to finish, um, all of their street tacos and it's really great, um, food. Um, and you know, there's another one called chicken and guns and they make rotisserie chicken and potatoes and the chicken fat drips over the potatoes um, and onions that's, and they all cook together and then they finish it with our salt and it's just delicious. Mm. And so it's, again, it's, it's, it's the, the, the folks who are, are, you know, um, 
winning James Beard Awards and, and Mission Star Awards to the folks that are running really great food carts that deserve recognition. That's awesome. Ben, so for um, places like people can't yet get it on like a Walmart.com or an Amazon.com. We, we do now sell on Amazon. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So people can get it there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I encourage anyone to go to jacobsandsalt.com. They have amazing, amazing flavors. Uh, I'm going to get some uh, black garlic salt for sure. And uh, also you have, I was reading, um, I think your sister you know, produces uh, honey also. Our and sister you, company, yeah. Yeah, so what is... Yeah, so we um, about two and a half years ago we acquired Be Local, um, which is a small honey mm-hmm. company, um, and they were you know it was it was a very small um, deal, but it was we loved the brand and we didn't it was about to go out of business and we wanted to try and keep it in business and um, and so we were able to to buy it and save it and we you know um, from there on have grown sales to. A, 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 to a very, very large extent and made it a sustainable business. Mm-hmm. And um, we now employ a full-time beekeeper um, and he manages 42 hives from oh. Bend, Oregon, where Deschutes Brewery is, um, to Seattle, Washington, to Portland and um, all over the place. And um, super talented beekeeper and, and just a really nice guy. And um, so, you know, and really what, what it comes down to is we felt very comfortable doing this because um, – it's an honey like salt is an elemental cooking ingredient. And we thought we think we make the best salt on the planet. And, um, and you know, as a result, cooks and, and home cooks and chefs need something to sweeten their dishes with. And so it's mm-hmm. either honey, or agave nectar or maple syrup or sugar, that sort of thing. And, but honey being kind of the least processed of all sweeteners, um, we thought was a really good fit because salt is, you know, core at its, ele- at its element and so is honey so where can people find that what's the website um be local.com and it's then B-E-E. Our, yeah local? exactly okay. and then also on our website jacobsandsalt.com okay. salty and sweet salt the and ultimate sweet. salty and sweet <laughs> nothing goes nothing nothing goes better so last question ben this is this is really fascinating it's really those core elements and that's when i was doing the research it's the story behind how it's made is really remarkable. Um, and I just want to hear about two things since it's inspired insider. I always ask what's been a low moment and then what's been an ultra proud high moment for you. Um, Mm. start off. What's been especially challenging low moment. They seem to happen every day. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but then you also get the highs too. Um, um, what's been a low moment? Um, cause oftentimes hmm. people see, Oh, I saw, you know, Jacobs and salt in William Sonoma, whole foods. And like, people don't know it took, you know, four years for you to even talk to the person or get into one of these places, you know, it took a lot of yep. grit and hard work. And so I always like to highlight one of those, those tough times. Um, we had a a tough moment for us was for me um was was um you know trying to trying to grow the business while keeping current current customers satisfied but then also um we had a an issue with um a former employee that had had taken money from the company and um that was very very difficult to um to deal with both personally just to knowing that somebody had betrayed you like that, but also um, from a financial and cash flow perspective, um, trying to keep the, the boat afloat, and um, that was a very, very, right. very difficult time. Yeah, it's um, like I haven't last... paid, you know, like I haven't paid myself in three years, and someone is taking money from the company. You know, like yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's that's, but we're we're beyond that now for sure. But it, that was most definitely a, a very difficult moment. Um, or period of time. Um, and then honestly, like the best moments for me are somebody that tries our salt for the first time or tries our salt, you know, or, you know, tastes our salt on a daily basis. And for me to see the reaction of, of, um, of them tasting great salt for the first time and knowing how transformative that can be. Um, 
and it sounds silly probably to to folks who haven't tried great salt before but it truly is the most effective way to elevate every bite of food is using great salt and you, know, you can spend twenty five dollars on a bottle of wine and that'll be gone in an hour um, or you can spend ten dollars on a package of good salt and that'll last you for months and um, if you if you care about the food that you use or even if you don't try using great salt and you will be amazed by how it transforms your, your eating experience. Yeah. What about a proud milestone? And actually, I mean, William Sonoma is probably a big one. What's another big one that you, uh, you know, just your sheer grit brought you, brought you to with not sleeping and uh, buying, getting, being able to afford health insurance for every all of our employees. I'm still proud of, proud of that, and that's been a couple of years now. But it's um, being able to do that is just makes me super proud and. Um, we're never going back on that as a company. So, um, and you know, the healthier we get as a company, the more we can do for all of our, the, you know, the whole team. Um, so that's what that's super makes me super proud, and it's it's fun for me for sure. What's next for Jacobs and Salt? What do you what's uh, next year? What's what's on the future? What's on the whiteboard? I have to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, we, I mean, you know, growing out our online sales is, is, is important for us um, on our website um, and then growing out our retail presence um, here in Portland and then on the coast. And then, um, you know, it, we've got a, a ton of different, you know, fun plans, but it, ultimately I, I want our salt to be made available to Americans across the country because um, it's because I believe it's that good and, and I believe that um, – that Americans deserve a better salt. Yeah. Ben, I want to be the first one to thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Everyone should check out Jacobson with an E, salt.com. And, um, you yeah, know, thank you. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I really appreciate it. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. Like a beach if you find the sand And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand